Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my December 2020 book haul. I have a large amount of books to show you. The vast majority of them are gifts. The first one is kind of a holdover from last month. It was supposed to come last month. It was a book I bought for myself. It has a little bit of an interesting story. Well, in two ways. Uh, the first part, I guess, of the interesting story of this collection of short stories, Athletic Shorts, uh, Six Short Stories by Chris Crutcher, is how I heard about it. Uh, one of the stories in this collection was made into one of my favorite movies of all time, Angus. It's a middle school uh, coming-of-age story. Well, actually, it takes place in high school, but it came out in, I think, 95, which uh, was summer of 95 was the time I was entering middle school. and. Uh, I feel like it's a really important story for all middle school schoolers to hear. <laughs> I almost wish I took it more to heart because middle school was really tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough anyway, but the message is in this story about how there is no normal and how you should, you know, find your own voice and, you know, don't let the bullies get you down. All that stuff is just super important, to, like, at that age. And it was based off of a short story in this collection, which I haven't read, but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I guess I'm a little scared because, you know, I love that movie. <laughs> so I hope that uh, the book li uh, lives up. Uh, also, I have to say that uh, one of the reasons I'm disdainful of uh, superheroes, particularly Superman, <laughs> is uh, because of a scene in this uh, movie, which I, I think might be available online. I might see about linking it down below. Anyway, the second interesting thing, I guess, about this book is more about how I got it. I, I bought it used. Uh, you know, the mail system in the U.S. has been crazy. Uh, like, uh, I was tracking it through UPS, and uh, it was, like, slowly, like, it came from a southern state, and it was slowly inching north and north, and then, like, for a while, like, it like it just got lost in a shuffle somewhere for two weeks, and I didn't know where it was. It was just like, you know, en route to your next destination. And it was in a bunch of places that were kind of close to me in the D.C. area, and then it veered into Richmond. It went right back down south again. I'm like, what? What happened? How did this happen? And I had to wait a few days for it to inch back up, and finally I got it, so... <laughs> I actually posted a picture of its journey on my Facebook, and apparently uh, my friends had a lot of uh, fun with that. And then when I got the book, I posted a picture of me with the package, and people were happy. <laughs> I think we're just looking for fun things to talk about in these times. <laughs> anyway, the rest of these books are gifts that I asked for. <laughs> I asked for eight books, and I got all eight because my family uh, is very accommodating, and I'm a brat, <laughs> apparently, that gets them all. Uh, so I guess I'll start with, uh, these four books. Uh, I asked for these specifically because I knew I'd be reading them quickly. Like, I hate that I ask for so many books that I know I will get to for a while. But I am meticulously going through my Goodreads list and trying to knock off whatever is at the top. And, uh, these four books, uh, are at the top uh, of Goodreads right now. I added them all in 2016, so I guess that tells you uh, how far behind I am. Uh, they're all uh, books with a Jewish theme, uh, and I'm hoping to read them along with these two books, which are also on that list, but I bought them a few years ago to use books to door. Uh, I'm hoping to read them all relatively quickly. I was kind of hoping to read them all in January, but I don't think I'll have time to read all six, so instead I will have to pick three, uh, because I have other, you know, reading uh, goals that I'm hoping to get to, so alas. But anyway, I thought I would go ahead and uh, just uh, quickly hold up uh, each of the books and uh, try to summarize from the back a little. This is Fields of Exile by Nora Gold. Uh, this is really uh, about uh, the pro-Israel, the pro-Palestinian uh, movements, especially uh, as they uh, infiltrate, I guess, into the academic uh, settings. And uh, the main character here is a girl who finds out that uh, a pro-Palestinian, I think, uh, uh, I guess a keynote speaker for Anti-Oppression Day uh, is a terrorist supporter and she's, you know, just uh, trying to make her own voice heard even though it can be difficult in some social settings to uh, be uh, supportive of Israel even when uh, the opposition is supportive of terrorism. So uh, I'm hoping this is a good book and that uh, it doesn't uh, veer into too much dogma and that it, you know, is genuine and nuanced and true, but uh, I will see. This next one is One More River by Mary Glickman. This is a mid-century book taking place, I think, around 
Mississippi with a uh, man uh, in 1962 uh, like delving into his father's past. This is These Days Are Ours by Michelle Hamoff. This is a post-September 11th book, I think, about young adults in New York trying to get their lives back together. And finally, this is This Beautiful Life by Helen Schulman. Pretty sure I heard her on a uh, book podcast interview years and years ago now when I added it to my Goodreads. This is about teenagers forwarding sexually explicit uh, material that goes viral. And you know how uh, dangerous or <laughs> salacious that can be, especially in today's world and what happens in the wake of that. The rest of these books are just random ones that I was interested in and hopefully I will get to them soon. <laughs> This one is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson, which is a 2020 science fiction release that caught my fancy and then I particularly specifically asked for it because I'm pretty sure it's a standalone book. <laughs> and so it's easier, you know, to buy a sci-fi and fantasy when they're standalones. You never know how it'll go, but I'm pretty hopeful about this. It's gotten a lot of good buzz. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a multiverse book, which uh, I'm not uh, as uh, well read in when it comes to sci-fi, but it's about this girl who can jump between Earths, basically. I do think uh, there is an underbelly about uh, politics and oppression or something of that nature that intrigued me uh, underneath of it. So uh, looking forward to it, hoping to have an SFF reading month down the line in 2021. This is one of my anticipated 2020 releases, uh, The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante. I held it up in my mid-year uh, freakout uh, check-in tag. Uh, since then, it's gotten uh, mixed reviews. Some people really love it. Some people, including our Steve Donahue, really do not. He put it on his worst uh, fiction of 2020 list, although personally, I know I'm a bigger fan as in a fan of, at all of <laughs> Elena Ferrante. And I also was intrigued because uh, the uh, book buyer at a local bookstore, Politics and Prose, uh, every year he and uh, the owner of the store, one of the owners, do a uh, holiday uh, gift list. And he suggested this book, and he said that one of uh, sort of the themes is that uh, the main character learns that adults have to lie, and that's just sort of a thing. And I don't know, I, the way he said it, you know, intrigued me. And so I'll link to that video down below. But in general, I guess, uh, Ferrante has a good track record with me. I like how she writes her characters, so uh, I'm ready to give it a go. And this is translated uh, by Ann Goldstein. This next book might be even more uh, controversial, uh, more because of the author. This is The Ichabod by J.K. Rowling, who is uh, recently, in the last few years, become uh, a bit of a pariah because she is so openly transphobic. And I know that uh, some people, when they disagree with an author, as I do with uh, her stance on uh, transgender issues, wouldn't then buy her books. Uh, I'm still in the mindset, especially with Rowling, that uh, I can separate the artist from the art. Uh, uh, you know, divorced from, you know, her... Uh, controversy as a person. I am intrigued by the Ichabog. My mother read me a couple of chapters when Rowling first uh, released them. They had the same sort of quirky style that Harry Potter did. I mean, even a little more quirky. I think, you know, aimed at a younger audience and a more fantastical novel. So I wanted to give it a go and see how I might like it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I didn't expect it actually to, to be this big. I don't know. Maybe I just <laughs> was thinking of... Uh, released chapters in the virtual world and it seems like air, like air, airless, I don't know, but uh, it's an actual book that uh, I hope to be getting to. And finally, this book wasn't on my radar at all, uh, except for uh, Booktube and Book Riot. Usually I'd hear about something like this from the Jewish Book Council, but it's really people like Liberty Harding and uh, uh, Rincey, and I think Rincey did a great review that I'll uh, link down below of this book. This is The Orchard by David Hopin, uh, and this is uh, a Jewish book. It's, uh, I will uh, read from the flap. Ari Eden's life has always been governed by strict rules. In the ultra-Orthodox Brooklyn, his days are dedicated to intense study and religious rituals, and adolescence feels profoundly lonely. So when his family announces that they are moving to a glitzy Miami suburb, Ari seizes his unexpected chance for a reinvention. Enrolling in an opulent Jewish academy, Ari is stunned by his peers' ambition, dizzying wealth, and shameless pursuit of life's pleasures. 
When the Academy's golden boy, Noah, takes Ari under his wing, Ari finds himself entangled in the school's most exclusive and wayward group. These friends are magnetic and defiant, especially Evan, the brooding genius of the bunch still living in the shadow of his mother's death. Influenced by their charismatic rabbi, the group begins testing their religion in unconventional ways. Soon, Ari and his friends are pushing moral boundaries and careening toward a perilous future, one in which the traditions of their faith are repurposed to mysterious, tragic ends. Mesmerizing and playful, heartrending and darkly romantic, The Orchard pr probes the conflicting forces that determine who we become, the heady relationships of youth, the allure of greatness, the doctrines we inherit, and our concealed desires. So, yeah, I mean, this is just so fascinating to me. I read a lot of books about the uh, Haredi or ultra-Orthodox community, but this one seems really unique. I don't think I've ever read about a group of young boys like this, and particularly ones that uh, are probing, I guess, in unusual ways, the religion, and uh, we're getting a bit into the politics of, uh, I don't know, different strains of the ultra-Orthodox. You know, some are, you know, more uh, strict than others, and uh, there's some wealth disparity, I believe, uh, that will come into play. And obviously, this uh, hit enough of a note that uh, non-Jews, uh, you know, are taken with the story as well, which always catches my attention, that, uh, you know, that these characters uh, can have a universal appeal. So uh, I'm excited and uh, hope for good things. Before I head out, although my battery is getting mighty low, so I should chop chop here, uh, this is my final book haul of the year, so I went ahead and I tallied up uh, the types of books I got uh, from different sources. Uh, when I started the year, I was hoping to mostly do library books, but of course coronavirus messed with all of us, and uh, I mostly have books that I just added uh, straight forward to my collection, you know, as gifts or purchases or what have you. But uh, in the beginning of the year, I did pretty well with library books, and I added a couple more when libraries started to reopen again, although mostly I read ebooks and audiobooks, which I didn't talk about on my hauls. But uh, all in all, I hauled 12 library books. Then I bought four new books from Barnes & Noble. Uh, I just, I made that its own special thing, because... Uh, when, it's, when I'm not buying indie books or I'm not buying used books, I'm usually buying from Barnes & Noble. And I bought four, which is lower than I thought it would be. Um, I was gifted, or won through uh, book, uh, you know, giveaways, uh, 15 books. Uh, uh, you know, the holidays, the winter holidays really put me over the top there. <laughs> Although I think two of them were uh, book giveaways uh, near the beginning of the year. And, you know, also a couple birthday books, of course. Uh, then um, I have a category for indie, uh, I bought indie books, meaning I either bought them from indie bookstores or I bought them from indie presses. And that totals out to 12 books, so uh, I was so worried that I wasn't, you know, doing my due diligence to keep the small guy in business, but I, I bought a fair amount of those books this year. And finally, I have 13 books that I bought used, which usually means I bought from Abe Books and occasionally from other places. <laughs> so all in all, I hauled 56 books on this channel, which I think is about the same as I did last year. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means. I guess all in all, uh, coronavirus didn't have that much of an impact on me. <laughs> Uh, I would have done better. I would have had fewer bought books and more library books if it weren't for the virus. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that about covers it for me now. You can find links to all of the books I mentioned, their Goodreads pages, down below. I will be back in a couple of days to do my final uh, quarterly writing wrap-up of the year, such as it is. <laughs> At least I should be proud of what I did during NaNo, because obviously writing 50k is a big deal, no matter what. <laughs> Not so much this month, December, but November was a good month in writing world, <laughs> yes. Uh, but I will uh, get into the nitty-gritty of all of that in a couple of days on this channel. <laughs> Uh, so I hope you are all very happy with uh, the final books you have added to your collections this year. I kind of think next year I'm going to be one of those geeky booktubers that throughout the year I will keep a spreadsheet of how I acquired these books because uh, with this I basically went through this afternoon and just tallied things up from the various videos but uh, I could streamline things and become one of those geeks. I feel like I'm you know, getting closer to the inner circle of booktube if I start a spreadsheet or two. So maybe that'll be a 2021 goal. But I'm rambling on enough here. Uh, uh, so in that vein, thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you next time.